Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator where today we're going to be taking a look at a new piece of software, Flight Simulator First Officer. Now I don't mind admitting that this is a piece of software that I had not come across before until they recently released their edition of this software for the Phoenix A320. As the name would suggest, Flight Simulator First Officer is exactly that. It provides you with a fully customizable First Officer to help you through your flights now available for the Phoenix A320 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, of course, many of you may be wondering now about FS2 Crew, which essentially does the same thing. However, as of yet, they don't have a version available at the time this video was being filmed for the Phoenix A320. So this is a somewhat of a unique piece of software at the moment. Flight Simulator First Officer is also rather cheap compared to FS2 Crew, but that's not to say that it isn't just as good. Now, FSFO actually has variants available for quite a number of different aircraft within Microsoft Flight Simulator. Essentially, there are versions available for the PMDG 737, the Phoenix A320, the Flyby Wire A32NX, the Headwind A330, the CRJ from Aerosoft, and the default Boeing 747-787s and the Breedock 737. In this video, we are just going to be focusing on their latest release, the Phoenix A320 edition, which at the time of the video being made is currently on sale for $14.99. Now, in this video, I'm going to show off some of its features and show you just how customizable this piece of software is. But I do have to stress right at the start that I didn't find setting this program up particularly easy. It actually took me quite a while. And that's all to do with the FSUI PC integration that it runs. So you do have to have a copy of FSUI PC. It doesn't have to be the registered copy. The free version is absolutely fine. And setting this up is quite important. If you do go ahead and get this, I highly recommend reading through the full details of the startup guide because I can guarantee you it will save you a lot of time. My co-pilot was announcing that he was doing things and in actual fact, none of the switches that he was saying he was moving were actually moving. And this was due to the fact that I'd not got everything set up quite correctly. The good news is, however, that as part of the installation package, it does ask if you want to download FSUI PC. So that is all integrated. I just didn't select everything to be downloaded. And this program does need everything, including the WASM package, which I didn't install the first time around. So once the program is installed correctly and everything else that goes with it and up and running, all you need to do is turn it on. Now, there is also an option to turn this on automatically at the moment the flight sim starts but I like to keep things uh, sort of manual in that sense so I know what is running what isn't running depending on how you have everything set up you can see as I've turned that on the uh, the co-pilot has already gone ahead and requested the ground services so the uh, the jetway and the uh, luggage vehicles etc are all coming into place now of course this is de all dependent upon how you've got things set up and it is really customizable. Let's go and have a look at some of the options. So under the configuration menu, you can select your standard operating procedures. Obviously, every airline is different. You can literally go through and tweak these as you wish. I'd already gone ahead and done this, so these are not the default settings, but you will obviously be able to go in and select these as you want. Things like the acceleration altitude, which is quite a nice touch. Some airlines use 1500 feet, whereas here on this channel, we use 1000 feet, for example. And of course, you don't need to have voice activation. All of this can be done by selecting at what altitude you want your first officer to do specific things. Obviously, if you are using voice, you can just turn this off, set it to zero, because you can use your voice to ask your first officer to do these specific commands. I also really like the fact that you can go and configure the lights and set those up uh, in one way or the other. And of course, you can also predefine which engine you're starting first engine one or engine two. 
The program also links to SimBrief if you are a SimBrief user and so it has extra information to really help your flight move smoothly. You can then go ahead and select things like your planned cruising altitude, your initial stop altitude, whether you're going to be using a SID, what flap setting you want for the departure, all the things like that that you can see on screen. You can even then go ahead and enter what's going to be the flex, V1, VR, V2, etc. And then the co -pilots obviously got all this information which you can then use during your takeoff. Now you're probably wondering well do I really want to do all this have to enter all these details into another box because I'm going to set up the FMGC anyway. Well the answer is no. If you want your first officer to set up the box for you and enter all this information into the book do then yes you do need to fill these out otherwise the first officer will just like a real world pilot read everything from the box that you've set up. So let's hop into the aircraft then and put it to the test. So here we are on the ground at Manchester and you can see that my Phoenix aircraft is set up uh, fully cold and dark. So I'm going to put the uh, software to the test and let it do the full setup. One of the things I am going to do prior to launching the, uh, the application is I'm going to just put some of the thrust levers and flaps levers etc um, in the wrong position intentionally in the hope that when we actually uh, launch it our first officer is going to come uh, do a little bit of the pre-flight flows and checks and uh, make sure that everything is where it should be so if we turn on the uh, the wipers as well for example into uh, into places they shouldn't be one of the things that you must have running prior to setting this up is you must have FSU IPC 7 installed and running it doesn't have to be a full registered copy of the freeware version is absolutely fine so you can see that I've got that uh, running already and you also don't want to run the flight simulator first officer program until you are sat in the flight deck if you run it beforehand then it can mess things up so wait until you are completely in the flight deck and ready to go before launching the application so i'm just going to go ahead and launch this now let me just go ahead and bring this in so you can see it on screen the first thing it will do is download the Simbri flight plan once you've gone in and set all that up. There is a tutorial video by the developer showing how you can go through and set all of this up. So I'm not going to look too much at the setting up side of things, but more just the application itself, how we can interact with it and how it all works. So download the Simbri flight plan and then that's done in the background. Once we're ready, we're going to turn it on uh, by uh, selecting this button here. You can, of course, also in the options go through and set this up so it works from the moment you launch the application but I like to have full control over things so I want to tell it when I want to launch etc so let's go ahead and uh, and turn this on good afternoon captain so you should now go through, perform the safety check. There we go. The windscreen wipers have been put in the right place. He's making sure the thrust levers are in the correct place. The flap lever has also moved. And you can see now the list of everything our first officer is going to do and the order in which he's going to do it. You don't have to have this on, of course. You can turn that off and he'll just continue to do it in the background. But certainly whilst you're getting used to the program, I found it's useful just to have this uh, flow and checklist uh, column enabled so that you can see exactly what... Uh, what he's going to do. So obviously you can see the aircraft is powering up and we're just waiting for the APU. There's a long time there so you can actually go ahead and skip these just by pressing the control and alt. What's really nice is the control alt combination unless you've gone in and set this up yourself manually in Microsoft Flight Simulator doesn't interfere with any other keybind so I can just go ahead and do that and uh, that should skip the uh, 200 seconds or so that it's going to wait. There we go, APU power has been established and now it will continue to uh, set the aircraft up. So everything that the first officer is doing at the moment is part of what's called the pre-flight checklist which is a silent checklist so he's not going to go ahead and announce everything that, um, that he's doing. What I have found though is that some of the tests that uh, the applications does is in the wrong order for example you can see now that he's doing the APU fire test um, this isn't fully integrated into the Phoenix none of the push buttons are actually working for the fire test where everything else that has been set up of course is 
Now, you would know if you watch the live streams and the uh, Real World Procedures tutorial that we've got here on the channel, that of course you need to do the fire test before starting the APU. So it seems there's a little bit, uh, a little bit of things done out of order, but nevertheless everything is done, just perhaps not in, uh, in the right order. What you can see now as well is that we've got information that we as the pilot flying need to do, so we need to go ahead, set the altimeter, program the, uh, the McDo, uh, do the walk around, etc and then uh, we can go ahead and set the uh, the FCU up, get the weather and our IFR clearance for air traffic control. So this application will not talk to uh, the default air traffic control for you. That is still, uh, that's still all on you as the pilot flying, if you're using default air traffic control, of course, that is. So the pre-flight flow has completed. I'm going to go ahead and perform my duties now. Once that's done, we'll come back and have a quick look. We can also use the application to get different information that we need. So, for instance, I can uh, request the weather report for uh, our departure and our destination. So, a quick way of getting the uh, the meta. We can also get the load sheet as well. So, here we go. Let's just fill in the init A page. So, 44.0. So, empty aircraft, essentially. Just go ahead and uh, fill that out. But it's uh, nice to be able to use this as well if you uh, want to get quick access to things. Now the box is all set up, it'll run through the pre-flight checklist. And of course, if you wish, you can use your voice for that. Pre-flight checklist. Pre-flight checklist. Cockpit preparation. Completed. Passenger sign. On. Adias. Set. Fuel. Two. Niner. Niner. 6 kilogram check fmgs set altimeters set checklist complete before start checklist doors closed beacon light on parking brake set checklist complete ground from cockpit go ahead ready for pushback Set parking brakes. Steering inserted. Release parking brake. Starting push. Clear to start engines. Start engines. Nose left. Nose left. No straight. No straight. Stop pushback. Stopping pushback. Set parking brakes. Bar disconnected. See you on the left side with the pin. Have a great flight. We'll look for you on the left side. Thank you. Taxi checklist. Taxi checklist. Flight controls. Checked. Check. Trim. Checked. Briefing. Completed. Flaps. Set. FMA takeoff data. Checked. Transponder. Set. Checklist complete. Before takeoff checklist. Before takeoff checklist. Engine mode selector. Set. Packs. Set. Ecam memo. No blue. Checklist complete. Flight attendants prepare for takeoff. Thrust set.
speed alive. Eighty knots. V one, rotate V two. Positive rate. Gear up. Landing gear up. Autopilot on. Acceleration altitude. Gear down. Landing gear down. Arm speed brake. Flaps three. Flaps full. Landing checklist. Landing checklist. Cabin. Notified. Go around altitude. Set. Ecam memo. No blue. Checklist complete. Flight attendants prepare for landing. So, hopefully this video has given you a little bit of an idea as to what Flight Simulator First Officer is all about. And as I say, it's not just available here for the Phoenix, that's just their latest release, but it is of course also available for those aircraft that I mentioned a little bit earlier on. Each one is an individual different package, so you would have to purchase the program and unlock the license key for each aircraft. I actually quite liked this once I got the hang of it, and one of the things that really impressed me was how good the speech recognition was. I didn't have to set anything up. I didn't even set up anything or train my voice in Windows for the speech recognition to work. It literally just worked for me right out of the box. Would I recommend Flight Sim First Officer as a purchase for you flying with the Phoenix? Well, Yes and no, but it all depends on how you fly your aircraft. For me personally, with all the hardware and things, I like to be able to have full control over all the flows and things like that. So I wouldn't want to use this program for its flows. Plus, some of the call responses are different to what pilots use in the real world. So if you're familiar with those, then this could put you off a little bit. That said, for standard Airbus SOPs, it is quite realistic, so if you're happy using those, then by all means. For me personally, I, as I said a moment ago, like full control over my hardware, my flows. I don't really want my first officer touching anything because I might miss something. But what I really do like is the ability to just use the voice to uh, activate the, uh, the flaps, get the landing gear up, the callouts for V1, VR, and the thrust reduction acceleration value those are really nice touches and those are the things that I could perhaps see myself using in the future because the program is fully customizable you do not have to utilize all of the flows and things like that you simply just don't activate them you just allow the program to sit there in the background so your first officer can do things that you've instructed him to you can download different sound packs as well, so you can have female officers, you can have British, American, European, different voice packs from all around the globe. Ultimately, I think this could be a great product for those of you that do want help flying the Phoenix A320. Do, as I say at the start of the video, make sure you read all the documentation and make sure things are set up correctly, otherwise you could find yourself being disappointed and spending lots of hours trying to troubleshoot when really everything's there right in the manual. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful and I would love to hear what you guys think on this product. If you have the product, let us know in the comments down below how you're getting on with it. And if you have things like FS2 crew as well, which one do you think you prefer looking at uh, both products together? If you have found this video useful, please do hit that like button and don't forget, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss any future content and live streams. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all again soon. Bye bye for now.